Hey guys, it's Andrea from the blog Pine and Prospect Home, and today I am bringing you part three of our uh, floors, refinishing our floors. So I talked about what we did to prep in order to DIY this project ourselves. I talked about sanding in my last uh, video, part two, and now I want to talk about the staining portion. So. This was quite the adventure, staining our red oak floors. Every single stain combination I tried brought out the pink tones, the red tones in our floors. And I wanted to find something that was going to, um, that was going to neutralize those warm tones in our flooring. So I did some research. My mom actually helped so much and she researched it and found out but if you want to uh, neutralize those red tones, then you've got to pick something that's on the green side, which sounds kind of crazy. <clears throat> I didn't want to stain my floors green, but green is opposite of red in the color wheel. And so uh, actually we went into a Sherwin-Williams store and I spoke with a paint spe specialist and he told me the same thing that my mom did. You've got to pick a stain that has green undertones. And so we were looking at so many stains. I tried a million combinations from Minwax. No matter what I tried, if I picked something with white in it, it brought out pink. If I picked something uh, with gray in it, it turned my floors like this purpley color. It was crazy. Um, but we were in Menards here in Michigan uh, and we found a Verathane stain called aged wheat and right when I saw it I thought that looks a little bit green to me. It had these green undertones and actually when we opened it up that night compared to another color we were going to try um, it looked straight green in the can and I was very hopeful but when we put it on our floors it was very dark and I didn't want to go that dark on my flooring. I wanted something lighter and something uh, brighter. Well, another tip that the Sherwin-Williams um, paint specialist told us about is that you can actually light and stain by mixing it with mineral spirits, 100% mineral spirits, which sounds crazy, but I tried it with this color and we did 50-50 uh, aged wheat with the mineral spirits and it was perfect. It was the perfect color and that's what we ended up doing. So our stain color is 50% aged wheat, 50% mineral spirits, and it turned out so beautiful. The color ended up being this like rustic brown color with gray undertones. I didn't want anything too gray. I wanted warmth on my floors, um, but it, I didn't want too much warmth. And so this ended up being the perfect, most beautiful color. Um, so I'm very, very happy with it. My husband and I applied all of the stain ourselves. Um, it was a lot of work. We vacuumed, mopped everything twice, and then uh, used rags to apply the stain and then another rag to wipe up the stain. So you can see with the addition of the mineral spirits, how it goes on looking a little bit darker, almost almost a little bit uh, red orange, but you can see we started right there in front of the sunroom and as it dries, it just turns into this beautiful, rustic sort of gray brown color. So you've got to give it a chance to dry. And uh, yeah, now we are working our way into the dining room. My husband's getting some fresh air. I need some too. Woo! Goodness. The way that we are applying this is just with um, some rags. Uh, any special type of rag, babe? Just a bag of rags. Just a, just a bag of rags from the hardware store. Applying the stain um, with a rag and then immediately wiping it up with another rag. So, uh, so far we really love the way it looks. It's absolutely beautiful and uh, we're gonna keep going. It's hard work. <laughs> In order
order to seal our floors. My husband came the next day, so we did all of that on a Saturday. And my husband came the next day and we chose uh, pretty much the only water-based poly that we could find locally. It's a brand called Old Masters, but I think any flat poly will do. We didn't want a shiny finish to our floors. We wanted a matte finish. And we found this water-based poly. And the reason I went with water-based is because uh, I had read that oil-based polys will yellow and amber over time, and I was trying to avoid that. So I'm back here at the house today. I will say that I feel like the poly did slightly warm up my floors a little bit, which at first I was very um, sad about, a little disappointed. There's just something about any type of clear coat going on red oak that immediately just turns it um, orange. Like when I was mopping my floors, uh, the wet, just the, the water on the red oak instantly turned it like yellow orange. So um, I think that the poly may have warmed them up a little bit, which I'm not gonna lie, I was a little sad about that. But when I look at the before photos of our flooring and I see just how, how they looked before compared to how they look now, it's still just a night and day difference. They look so much more beautiful than they did before. So I think I just have to be okay with that. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if we could have gotten away with no poly. I, I think every single tutorial and blog post I've read says you need to protect your floors with a top coat. I am very happy with them and I am excited that I was able to take you guys along. I hope it was a help to you all. I hope this stain choice is one that many people can use for their red oak flooring if they're looking for a color that's going to sort of neutralize and balance out those pink and red boards. But thank you guys so much for watching today and for following along with me on this crazy adventure. Uh, one of the hardest DIYs I think we've ever tackled, I'll be honest. <laughs> my body hurts <laughs> from all the staining. Uh, my knees are sore, but um, it was worth it and I'm sure we saved a lot by doing it ourselves. So thanks so much for watching guys and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.